A new videotape surfaced today showing Duck Dynasty star Phil Robertson expressing the same views about gay people that got him bounced off the air this week. This video was made three years ago, and his network a &E is not saying whether they knew about it when they signed him and his family up for what would become America's most watched reality show. No comment from a and &E. You'll recall a and &E suspended Robertson after he equated homosexuality with bestiality in a GQ, inter GQ interview and suggested that African Americans were happy in the old Jim Crow South. His suspension really is amping up the culture wars, also amping up the weirdness. A Republican candidate for Illinois' 11th Congressional District today compared Robertson to civil rights icon Rosa Parks. Last night in a statement, the family said they're talking with a and &E now about Duck Dynasty's future, saying, we cannot imagine the show going forward without our patriarch at the helm. Phil, the family said, would never incite or encourage hate. Now look at those words when you look at this video from 2010. Phil Robertson citing a Bible passage and railing against modern secular society. First they say there is no God. Get him out of your mind. Then they bow down to birds, animals, and reptiles, and each other. And the first thing you see coming out of them is gross sexual immorality. They are insolent, arrogant, God-haters. They are heartless. They are faithless. They are senseless. They are ruthless. They invent ways of doing evil. Phil Robertson expressing, expressing firmly held views that many people do share, but many others find deeply offensive, and his network finds, at least for the moment, problematic. Again, no comment from the network about whether that network knew about this video years ago. There is plenty to talk about with CNN commentator Michaela Angela Davis and Ralph Reed, the president of Century Strategies and founder and chairman of the Faith and Freedom Coalition. Ralph, you say Robertson's suspension is a brazen act of anti-Christian bigotry. How so? Well, I think because the reason why he was placed on suspension was because he expressed his Christian faith and his belief in the Bible. I mean, the, the uh, allegedly offensive passage for which he was placed on suspension was simply a virtual direct quote uh, from the book of 1 Corinthians in the New Testament. And I think if you read the totality of the interview in GQ, which I have done, I, I think that this is unfair. I think it's a distortion of his true views. He makes it abundantly clear that we are called as believers to love everyone, that we are not to judge anyone, that ultimately God is the one who is all of our judge and we're all sinners saved by grace. Uh, I thought it was a very uplifting uh, statement. And while he certainly would have ex expressed himself in some words that I would not have used, um, that's why a and &E has a reality show bu built around this family, because of the homespun, folksy way uh, in which this family expresses their views. You, you said it was an uplifting statement. There was another video that came out today of Roberts from a couple years ago, where he again is quoting the Bible, but it's a different verse. And he suggests that gays, again, quoting the Bible, are insolent, arrogant, God-haters. They are heartless, faithless, senseless, and ruthless. You know, does that express the same sentiment you were just mentioning before? Well, I'd have to see the full context of the statement in which he said it. Uh, you know, this is a snippet of a, of a fuller presentation. Uh, but based on my understanding of the views of uh, uh, Mr. Robertson and the Robertson family. Uh, these are people who love God, who believe that they shouldn't be judging anybody, uh, that they are called to love everyone and show civility and respect for everyone, even those that they disagree with. But I think what the broader culture has to do, and this is why millions of people have risen up in the last 48 hours to defend the Robertson family, is what the larger and broader culture has to do is to respect the authenticity and the genuineness of the faith testimony of evangelical Christians and faithful Catholics. And when they say they believe the Bible and they quote it to sanction them, to punish mm -hmm. them, to fire them, to mistreat them because all they've done is express that faith, 
I think has no place in America. Well, they didn't fire them yet. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. But what about what Ralph is saying, Michaela? He's mm -hmm. suggesting the Robertsons believe what they believe. This is an authentic feeling that they hold. You've suggested that this is part of a, a bigger ideological civil war. Yeah, I, I think, and I agree with him to a certain, to a certain extent. They, this is very authentic. This is very true and core to their beliefs. But it's a very, very narrow, sequestered, fundamental belief system, right? And so when you are part of the, of the popular culture, you have to now negotiate that. So that's what we're seeing happening. And I feel like this great divide is finding itself in a lot of popular culture conversations. And this is just another one of them. And, and I find very little upliftment in saying that someone's lifestyle would morph into bestiality or that they incite evil. These are very, very hurtful words. They're not just, you know, not just doctrine. And there's a lot of things in the Bible, right? Snakes talk in the Bible. People live in whales in the Bible. People have 300 wives in the Bible. So there are a lot of things in this great book that can be used to to substantiate slavery. The Bible was used to keep people enslaved. So when we only use that as the foundation of making an argument, there are a lot, there are a lot of holes in that. And this is, this is probably the first time that this family has ever really had to know gay people or be in touch with black people or other, they've been very removed. And now that they're part of the larger conversation, we have to both be in conversation with each other, right? They have to hear what the larger population has to say in response to these very, very specific religious beliefs. And if this were fundamental Muslims, if this was the Shahs of Hollywood, you know, really protesting their religious beliefs, would the right be so in defense of them if we heard them you know, quote the Quran. Like, would this, this equality freedom thing works in a lot of ways. You know, Sarah Palin, Ralph, said that, that a lot of the critics of the Robertson, she called them intolerant haters. Or does it have to be that harsh? Do people who have concerns mm. with what the Robertsons are saying, do they have to be intolerant haters? Or as you say, you know, anti-Christian bigots. Is there really that big of a divide here? Well, I, I think that it's, uh, it's interesting and, and perplexing that the prophets of tolerance who say that we ought to be tolerant of other views uh, don't show that same level of tolerance for those who believe in Orthodox Christian uh, or Orthodox Jewish faith, for example. And, and I would say that um, this is a teachable and clarifying moment for American society. Are we going to say, are we really saying that those who believe that the Bible is the Word of God and who believe that it is the pattern on which they ought to order their lives, not in judging anybody else, but how they order their lives, are we going to say that that is ipso facto uh, intolerant and shouldn't be included in the broader discourse? I don't think we are. Look, there's a reason why 14 million people are watching this show every week. There's a reason why they get higher ratings every week than the Breaking Bad uh, season finale had. There's a reason why A&E wanted this show, because people are hungering for a sense of meaning and purpose. And I would just say, uh, with all due respect about all the things that are in the Bible, we're not talking about dietary laws out of the Old Testament. We're not talking about Old Testament law. We're talking about the New Testament statement about how one ought to order their lives. And we should be clear that Phil Robertson answered a direct question. He was asked, what do you believe sin is? And he simply quoted scripture. If that's viewed as hateful, then God Almighty is hateful. So, Michaela, what if he does come back? But, I, you know, I don't think that people watch that show to hear his views on scripture. They're very unique authentic American characters. But when you're bringing in your beliefs that, that can hurt others, that's not why we're tuning into Duck Dynasty. So I think we have to be clear about what is happening in reality television and what's happening at home or in his church, which is his business. But when it comes out in a way that in, in a public forum, in media, we have to, you know, now he has to negotiate with how that 
how that makes other people feel. So I think we need to be clear about what that show is about. It's not about his Christian views, and that's not why we watch it. They're very entertaining, but now this is a teachable. I, I really agree with him. This is a teachable moment on both sides. Can, can we not draw such hard lines and listen to each other and understand there are all kinds of people with all kinds of views coming from all different kinds of backgrounds that have to work together? This family hasn't really had to be in a cosmopolitan, multi-thinking world, and now they are, and they need to be coached through it. Michaela, Angela Davis, Ralph Reed, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much.